We're going to look at volumes of revolution involving disks. In this first example, I've got y is equal to x squared, and I've got that bound with the y-axis and a line up above at y equals 4. You can see that I've got that area shaded, and we're going to revolve that around the y-axis. Shout out to the creator of the applet that I'm going to show you down in my description. This applet really makes the volume come alive for us. I'm going to go ahead and take this area and revolve it around the axis so you can see that we are forming a solid, a three-dimensional solid, kind of like a bowl shape. We're going to be finding the area using cross sections and those cross sections are going to be disks. They're going to be circular cross sections with a thickness in the y direction. If I draw one of those disks over here on my image, I can go ahead and draw it in here in blue and I can see that it's got thickness here in the y direction. So I've got this thickness here, dy. If I go ahead and sketch it off of my figure, you can see it just a little bit better. You can see there's that thickness, dy. Knowing this thickness is really important because it tells you what variable to use as you're integrating. Because we're using y as our integral, that means that everything in my integral is going to be in terms of y. So for the volume, I'm going to be stacking disks. And I'm going to stack the disks at the lowest y value. That lowest y value is at 0 up to the highest y value. And that highest y value is that line that we're bounding it at, which is y is equal to 4. So my upper y value is 4. Now these disks are cross sections, so I'm going to take the area of the cross section, which is going to be the area of the circle, times the thickness. In our case, that thickness is a dy, so this is going to be a dy. My area is the area of a circle, so that's going to be pi r squared, and we already have those limits of integration, which are 0 to 4. So the last thing that I need here is the radius of this disk. So my radius of the disk, of course, measures from the center out to the edge. If I go over here to my figure, I'm measuring then from the axis of revolution out to my curve. So anywhere along here, my radius is going to go from the axis of revolution out to my curve. My curve is y is equal to x squared, but I instead want to measure that in the x direction, or in other words, I want that function in terms of y. So I'm just going to solve that one. So y is equal to x squared. I want a function in y instead. So I take a square root, and the square root of y is equal to x. That gives me the distance from the axis of revolution out to my curve, and this is r. Notice that I picked up the non-negative square root, and that's because we're working with the area in the first quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead and put the square root of y in for r, and I think I'm just about ready to integrate. So I've got the integral from the lowest y value to the highest y value, 0 to 4, pi r squared, r is the square root of y squared, all dy. Let me move this up so we can finish our integral. I get, let's see, let's just still continue simplifying. I'm going to move that pi outside. Squaring the square root of y gives me just a y dy. And I get pi times, let's integrate, y squared divided by 2 evaluated from 0 to 4. So I'm going to take the antiderivative at 4 minus the antiderivative at 0. And I get pi times 4 squared over 2 minus pi times 0 squared over 2. My second term goes away. That first term is 16 pi divided by 2, also known as 8 pi. Now let's revolve around the x-axis. In the second one, we're again looking at that parabola, y equals x squared, but we're bounding it with the vertical line x equals 1 and the x-axis. So you can see that I've got that area shaded. That's the area that we're revolving around the x-axis. So as we revolve this one, we can see that our cross sections are going to be, again, circles. And my circles are going to line up in this direction this time. So if I take one of those circles off of the 
coordinate system, what we're looking for is the direction of that thickness. There's a decent one. So my thickness there is in the x direction. So that's going to be a dx. That means when I put my volume together, stacking up those disks, I want everything to be in terms of x. So my volume is equal to, I'm just going to write in general here, x1 to x2, the area of my cross section, which is a circle. So pi r squared dx. What I need, I need a couple of things, right? I need my limits of integration. And as I'm looking for those limits of integration, I am going along the x axis this time. That's how I'm stacking those up. My lowest x value is zero. That's where we're starting. And then we're stopping at that vertical line x equals one. So my upper x value is going to be one. Let's go ahead and put this together as we go. So I've got zero to one pi is going to stick around. I also need my radius. My radius measures from the axis of revolution up to that curve. So no matter where I'm at, it's going to be from the axis up to that curve. I do want that curve in terms of x. So for my radius, I'm going to go ahead and pick up x squared. So this is going to be um, x squared, but that's r. I need to square it and then dx. This is my integral. I am ready to simplify. Let's bring that pi out in front. That's now 0 to 1 x to the fourth dx. Using that power rule to integrate, I've got the pi and then x to the fifth power divided by that new power 5, and we're evaluating from 0 to 1. Evaluating this, I get pi times, let's put 1 in first, so 1 to the fifth over 5 minus 0 to the fifth over 5, and that gives us a volume of pi fifths. In this last example, our axis of revolution is going to be off of the coordinate axes. In this last one, we're taking the region that's bound again by y equals x squared, the x-axis, and this time x equals 3. So you can see that region that I've got there in the first quadrant. I took a mirror image of it so I can get a look at what this looks like as I revolve it around the x equals 3 axis. So I just drew the mirror image there on the other side. I want you to decide if we're going to integrate with respect to x, which would be a dx, or with respect to y, which would be a dy. As you're coming up with that, you can go ahead and watch what I do on the screen here. I'm just going to put in one of our cross sections. Okay, how did you do? Here is a sample cross section. That sample cross section has thickness in the y direction. So I want everything here in terms of y. So as I start to piece my volume together, it's going to be from a y1 to a y2. We can already see that that lower y value is going to be at zero. And then the area of a circle, that's going to be pi r squared. And then we do want dy. Let's go ahead and tackle the limits of integration next. To get to the limits of integration, I want to be able to stack these starting at 0, and I want to find that highest y value. Well, that highest y value is going to happen when x is equal to 3. So that highest y value over here is going to be f of 3. And as I put 3 in, f of 3 is equal to 3 squared. I'm on that parabola, which is equal to 9. So my limits of integration, I'm going to start stacking those at 0 up to a y value of 9. So from 0 to 9, pi, let's figure out what r is. R measures from the axis of revolution over to my curve. So I'm going to be measuring from the axis of revolution over to my curve. That's supposed to be straight. That one's a little bit straighter. So you can see that my distance here, that R value, is really the distance between my two curves. To get the distance between the two curves when they're oriented this way, 
I want to take my rightmost curve and subtract the leftmost curve. So to come up with the radius here, my radius is going to be that rightmost curve. So I'm just going to say r minus my leftmost curve. If I was going up and down, I would take my upper curve and subtract my lower curve to get the distance between curves. Here, my rightmost curve is my axis of revolution. So that's going to be the value x equals 3. So as I'm putting this together, I've got x equals 3 as my rightmost. My leftmost is my curve y equals x squared. I also need to solve this guy for x, so I get a function in terms of y. So as I take that, y is equal to x squared. We did this before. I'm just going to take a square root on both sides. And the square root of y is equal to x. This is my leftmost curve in terms of y. And there's my radius. Let's go ahead and put that into our volume integral. So I need r here. So 3 minus the square root of y squared dy. As I continue to simplify this, I can bring the pi out in front, and I really want to foil what I've got inside the parentheses. So 0 to 9, I'm going to bring that pi out in front, and I am foiling 3 minus radical y, 3 minus radical y. As I foil that, I get 3 times 3, which is 9. And then in the middle, I get negative 3 radical y twice, so that's going to be minus 6 radical y. And on the end, those two negatives multiply to be a positive. And then radical y times itself is equal to y, and we've got our dy here on the end. Just one more thing that I need to change before I can integrate, and that's to change the square root into a power. So I can rewrite this middle term as negative 6 y to the 1 half power. Okay, here comes the integral. So we get the pi on the outside. On the inside as I integrate, 9 becomes 9y. That negative 6 y to the 1 half, I'm going to add a 1, which is going to give me a 3 halves power. And I'm dividing by that new power of 3 halves plus y to the second, and I divide by my new power 2. I'm going to evaluate this from 0 to 9. Let me move this all the way up as we continue to simplify. That middle term, I've got that fraction where I'm dividing by a 3 halves. That's the same as multiplying by my reciprocal. So as I simplify this through, I've got pi and then 9y minus 6. I'm going to multiply by this reciprocal instead. So times 2 thirds y to the 3 halves power plus y squared over 2. Um, evaluated from 0 to 9. We're just about there. I'm going to cancel the 3 into the 6, and I get a 2 here. And I'm also going to simplify that y to the 3 halves power. y to the 3 halves power is the same as the square root of y cubed, or y radical y. That's going to make it easier to simplify in my last step here. Okay, so my antiderivative, as simple as I can get it, is this. So it's 9y minus 4y radical y divided by, oh, it canceled, divided by nothing, plus y squared over 2. And I'm evaluating this from 0 to 9. So I get 9 times 9. I'm taking my antiderivative evaluated at 9 first, minus 4 times 9 times the square root of 9 plus 9 squared over 2 minus all of this evaluated at 0, but all of my antiderivative every single term has a y in it. So when I plug a 0 in, I get a 0 everywhere. To keep this simple, I'm just going to evaluate this using my calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 9 times 9 minus 4 
times nine times the square root of nine. I'm just gonna put that in as times three, and then plus nine squared, I'm gonna do 81 divided by two. I want my answer as a fraction, so before I hit enter, I'm gonna to go to my math key. So I'm gonna click on my math menu. I do want convert to fraction, so I choose enter and then enter again to get my answer as a fraction. And we end up with 27, don't forget about your pi, 27 pi halves. And that's our solution. Next, we're gonna look at volumes using washers, really similar to what we've done here. You guys are doing so great. Thanks so much for watching.